It's Tuesday, February 15th, 2022. I'm Ashley Pollard here for today's edition of Tuesday Talk, where we review common real estate and mortgage related topics. Today's topic is, should I use down payment and closing cost assistance for my home purchase? I'm first gonna define what these types of programs do. Now, down payment assistance and closing cost assistance programs are going to provide loans, which are sometimes forgivable, and also uh, sometimes grants to would-be homeowners if they're having trouble coming up with the money that they need for down payment and closing costs. Now, the obvious benefit of this is that it makes buying a home more affordable if you no longer have to come up with the total amount um, required before you close. If you can get a program that's gonna help you, then you might have some options that open up to you. So I wanna today talk about some things that you should consider and be aware of if you are thinking about using a down payment or closing cost assistance program. So the first thing to consider is that the program may come with residency restrictions. Some programs require buyers to be in the home for extended periods of time, maybe five to 10 years. And some programs even require the buyer to live in the home for the life of the loan. Now, this is not a good idea if you're gonna buy a multifamily home that you eventually want to fully rent out. If you're gonna eventually move out and you have a down payment program where you have to live in the home for the life of the loan, those are conflicts of interest. So you wanna make sure that you're choosing the right program for what you're looking to do. The second thing is that the programs may have eligibility requirements. So they might offered, be offered to only certain types of buyers, maybe first time buyers. Um, they might have certain income, credit, or loan limits. Um, they also might have to require you to use a specific lender and maybe even take some classes. I actually have um, a former client who took a down payment assistance course and didn't tell our lender and found out that the lender did not accept the course. So the only options at that point are to pretend you didn't take the course and take that loss or use what you got from the course and find a new lender. So again, that's not a situation you want to be running into. So talk to your lender about that before you decide on a program to use. Number three, the down payment and closing costs program might come with a higher interest rate. Now, this is not going to be good for you because it's going to decrease your buying power if you're, let's say, approved at a 3% interest rate. And with the down payment program you're using, it's going to change your interest rate to be higher. Um, you also might have trouble locking your interest rate. If you are waiting on the state or waiting on someone to do paperwork for this program, you can't really lock in your rate if you don't have confirmed closing date. So these are all, again, things to talk to your lender about when you're considering a program to use. Number four, the closing process may potentially be slower. So the state or maybe the city or maybe the county or maybe even the lender is the person that's going to be funding this loan for you. If you are not working with people who are moving urgently or maybe they have a lot of things on their desk and they can't get to you as quickly, that's going to slow up your closing process. And, um, you know, the seller might not be happy about that. They might not even accept your offer at the beginning. If they know you're going to use down payment assistance, they might just go with someone else because if their agent you know knows their stuff they're going to tell them hey with these down payment assistance programs it could take a lot longer to close so if we're on a tight timeline we probably shouldn't think about using one of these if we can avoid it so these are situations again you want to talk to your realtor talk to your lender because you don't just want to jump into something and then have no idea how it's going to actually affect you once you do find a home and are able to go under contract Number five is that the down payment and closing cost assistance program may have payback requirements and it may even become a second lien. So this one's huge. Every down payment assistance program is not a grant. A lot of times they're advertised as grants, but sometimes there is um, some fine print. Some of them actually become a second lien on your home. And if you don't know what a lien is, I defined it. Please go to my YouTube and watch my video on liens. But it's important that you understand, like I said before, the program that you are seeking to use because if you think it's a grant, but really it's a second lien on your home, you have to know how that's gonna affect you. Maybe it's not gonna affect you because you're gonna just stay in the home and do what you have to do. But if you got other plans for your property, you wanna make sure that you are getting into something that works for you. So the amount that you're approved for for your program is gonna vary depending on the program that you choose. If you're interested in state programs, please let me know. I will send you some resources to start off with. If you're interested in lender-specific programs, I do have lenders that offer 
down payment assistance so they can assist you with that just reach out to me for that as well if you have any other questions about down payment assistance i'm your girl so reach out to me let me know otherwise thanks for tuning in today for today's edition of tuesday talk enjoy the rest of your day and i will see you next tuesday which actually happens to be february 22nd 2022 it is 22222 it is also my 32nd birthday so it's going to be a really special day on that day I will see you next Tuesday. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great night.